Welcome to Countdown to Infinity, a Marvel's Avengers podcast. I guess at this point it's just a Marvel podcast, right? Like, Yeah, it's a Marvel's pod. MCU-esque? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, where we talk all things Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm-hmm. including the films, the TV shows, all that jazz. Yes. Anything with that Marvel intro? You got it. You got it. Mm-hmm. You know the one. Dun-da, dun 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 Wait. That's is that, not, is that not Game of Thrones? Dun, 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 yeah, that's yeah. Game of Thrones. You know Marvel. <laughs> bom, 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 bom. How how would you do it? Um, dun, 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 dun. It's, yeah. it's like that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a Sylvester score, I think. Okay, <laughs> that, wait, do it again. I was about to do Game of Thrones again. I was about to do dun 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 Okay. Anyways, you don't listen to us for our singing. No. Well, some of you might, so congrats, because you got a good one. Free show. You have a good one this week. We're really excited to be back because we get to talk about a new series on Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. X-Men 97. Yes. A follow-up to X-Men, the animated series, which played, which aired, played, which aired from 1992 to 1997. Well, it's back. Mm -hmm. Disney bought Marvel and waited just a little bit before bringing back something from 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You weren't even born yet when the first episode came out. I was not born. I was still thriving in my mama's womb, very similar to what we have seen on screen. What? Segway. So X-Men 97 is back. Mm -hmm. New episodes. We are uh, talking kind of just... Close to halfway through the season, this first season. Yes. Just the first three eps. Mm-hmm. And we'll be back to talk more. Yes. But yeah, we're talking X-Men 97. My name is Manuel. Oh, yeah. My name is Sophia. Were you? Hmm. Or actually, I was going to save this for later. What? Favorite X-Men. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm, just out, mm-hmm. the, out the gate? Out the gate. Favorite X-Men. Oof. Oh, man. I, was just, I would say Storm. Storm is awesome. Yes. Very powerful. Powers, mm-hmm. Very, very, uh, I would say, very stoic and heroic and a leader, natural born leader. She is, very much so. Literally, and, okay. And you know what? I think that she's probably one of the biggest empaths that we have on mm, the team. Yeah. So that's probably uh, why she pulls at my heartstrings. Yeah. And, hey. and then also for other reasons, but. We can use a little we'll storm to, right now. We'll get to know. We'll get to why. Yeah. yeah. Um, My favorite? Do you want to guess? Oh, sure. Oh, wait, let me. Let me is it Beast? It's Beast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love Beast. He was going to be my first choice, too, but then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pick him, so I better just pick somebody else. Hank McCoy. He's so smart. Mm-hmm. He, even in the live action stuff, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Holt. I don't know who's hotter, when Kelsey Grammer, a.k.a. Frazier, played him, uh-huh. or when Nicholas Holt played him. They're both so hot, you know, same energy. Yeah. Both of them. So Those voices. So, so hot. Yeah, good voice. You got to have a good voice you for You got to have a good voice. Did you watch... I mean, it's a little hard for you to have watched because you were uh, on, you know. I didn't have as much screen yet. time. <laughs> yeah. But did you watch the X Men animated series early on? No. You just kind of knew about it, though. Or I no? knew, of course, I knew about it. Um, there were, uh, I, I want to say, there were reruns. Oh, I think so. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, because yeah. or it's like a fever dream, and all of the animation from like the early 2000s, 2000s esque were they, very similar. <laughs> they aired basically. Um, Saturday mornings on Fox. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Saturday mornings, you're off of school. Classic. You either watch ABC mm-hmm. or Fox, n- ba- nothing else. No. Nickelodeon, you, Nickel- Oh, I mean, okay, you're talking cable kids. Oh, ooh, la, la. You know, the rich and famous. <laughs> you know, I'd put on HBO and watch... Uh, Crash Sex Box. in the City as a oh. child. I said, it, I, see, I said an actual kid show from HBO. See, I don't know much because I didn't you have that. You know Crash Box? But I definitely watched... The X Men series on Fox, and because there were so many episodes, it definitely reran. I think, mm. but I would say this too: most of people our age, yes, obviously I'm the sorry, comic would, books are big, but most of the people who grew up around this time, their image of the X Men and the voice mm-hmm. of Wolverine mm-hmm. and the voice of Storm comes from the nineties animated series you know yeah. what i'm saying sure yeah. more so than anything else and then of course all of the live action stuff so kind of formative mm-hmm. formative mm-hmm. time for for marvel yeah at the time okay cool yeah <laughs> well they brought it back 
And you got, uh, I'm not going to go down the list of actors, but it follows pretty quickly from the events of the original animated series when Professor Xavier Mm -hmm. sacrifices himself in the finale. Charles. Uh, And then I guess... It's kind of too late, but spoiler alert, I guess, if you haven't seen the show yet. <laughs> but if you're listening to this, you probably have at least seen the first three episodes. So, because we're going to talk about, you know, what happens and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, Cyclops is kind of the de facto leader yeah. for a little while. Jean Grey is back. Storm, of course. Logan or Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Morph, Rogue, Hank Beast. McCoy, Beast, Gambit, Jubilee, and a Bishop. Um, and of course, Magneto, our boy Magneto. There's also kind of a new X-Men introduced, kind of at the first episode. Roberto da Costa, who is Sunspot, mm-hmm. a mutant, a new mutant yes. for us to see. But it's kind of the core group of X-Men are back. And with a kind of a giant absence in Professor X being gone. But still a whole lot to be, to, a whole lot of fun to be had if you're an X-Men, I think. You know, uh, we watched To Me, My X Men, uh, which deals directly with uh, Professor X's death and sentinel technology in the hands of humans. Mm-hmm. Then we watch Mutant Liberation, which details Magneto's return as the heir to Professor Xavier's estate and a big kind of redemption for him, or not all the way, but a little bit of redemption for Magneto and Fire Made Flesh which is all about Mr. Sinister, a clone rogue, and honestly, the future and babies. <laughs> and see, wild. that's really where it took a turn for me because I don't remember that at all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're <laughs> kind of diving deep into the comics now. And yeah. I mean, okay. Well, what did you well, think generally of, we, we're not, you know, we have to talk, de- you know, about each episode individually, but how do you feel about X-Men 97? Kind of like settling back into this, you know, story of the week with a cliffhanger and maybe some wild reveals. Yeah. So I was not, uh, I was, I was not ready for how much I did not need to know. Does that make sense? Like I, even not participating as much and not remembering a lot of the series from before where we are, um, they do a pretty good job of just like, okay, this is it. This is what's happened. Here's some context. And like, there are some awkward moments between characters where you're like, wait a minute. Something's going on there. So even though I don't know the entire story behind those characters, uh, I feel totally comfortable and I'm really enjoying the series so far. Again, it's only been three episodes, so I understand. Like, I don't mean to be premature in case, like, it tanks, which I don't think it will. But I think that the animation looks really cool. It's It's nice. It feels nostalgic, of course. Yes, definitely. Yeah, really cool. And uh, I think the storylines are fun. I think that um, the Magneto thing was a twist because... Huge twist. Him, I totally remember. Um, And... Also hot right magneto's kind of oh my gosh everybody in the series is, is ripped is but that's everyone's how they ripped. were designed way yeah. back when too like everybody every lady had a hot bun yeah. and All every guys, dude yeah. had a six to and eight and let's be pack. honest live action as well you got it you hear of the you you hear of the the marvel the the marvel glow uh-huh. up you gotta you gotta uh-huh. be you gotta basically match up to stan lee and mm-hmm. and, and and kirby's drawings yes which, I mean, that doesn't disappoint. And I think yeah, that... Yeah, some people think I look a lot like, you know... Okay. These superheroes, I'm mm-hmm, just saying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think I'm having a lot of fun. And uh, I can't wait to see the next set because the cliffhangers are cool. Yeah, awesome. So. <laughs> and it reminds me of the show and, of course, comic books, where <laughs> the whole point is for you to buy the next one or watch the next you. thing of the thing it's based of on. Of the show that it's based on. <laughs> I will say it is like I forgot how wild the swings were and how large the stakes were. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, because oh, every episode the world's gonna end. Oh, the world's gonna, reality's gone. Yeah, the future is done. Every every episode, um, and which is really really fun because in an era I think of these, <laughs> it is of of like these episodic TV shows mm-hmm. where you're like. I don't know. You know you're like 12 episodes away from the answer, you know, and you're mm-hmm. like they're going to take forever. There's a little twist here now and then. It's I'm not I like how efficient these are, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like the world's going to end, but holy moly. <laughs> you know, we got to figure it out together as the X-Men. Um I like how relevant the series still remains. We kind of looked at each other when it was the uh 
mutant liberation or the uh, UN storming yes. of the Capitol yes. January 6th moment. I was like, well, like, Ooh, that I'm, looks familiar. Yeah. And I don't think it was exactly based on that at all. Actually. I think it's just kind of crazy how we live in comic books now, but mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and of course <laughs> always sort of the way that humans interacted with mutants has been, I mean, it's kind of the reason why Stanley created the characters, you know, to show kind of what marginalized people feel mm-hmm. uh, feel like, and mm-hmm. and it's 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 still really relevant in that way. But it's also fun to see kind of the big, broad, archetypal, kind of uncomplicated version of these superheroes, uh, just in really complex relationships. You know, because you're like, I know Logan Wolverine's gonna be really gruff and grumpy. Mm-hmm. I know that. Yeah, they each have their own character. They all traits. have their characteristics, and yeah. they're very like that. But then the relationships between each other mm-hmm. are intense. We still got that hardcore love triangle well, I feel between like- Jean Grey, Logan, and, and and Scott, and we get well, yeah. I think that there is just um, a balance between the characters because when you have so many characters, like there has to be yeah. some sort of love triangle or a couple because mm-hmm. there are some things happening with Magneto, but we don't have to talk. And then I think that there's also like a yin to the yang in every like friend group or whatever. Um, so yeah, like it just, it makes a lot of sense. And I think Stan knew what he was doing. Yeah. All oh this, yeah. All the symbolism in these episodes, I see it. Yeah, and they all fit. And the characters. Yeah, they all fit really well mm-hmm. together as a team. And like, keep in mind, too, that the, the, the core group here has been together for a long time. Since they were now. kids. Yeah, so it's... it's it's and th- There are newer X-Men, but they sort of figure each other out, and it's kind of the way you can interrupt that, that that's really exciting. I think one of the more tragic moments of the season so far is when your favorite Mm X-Men storm is uh, shot with a radiation ray that removes her powers. So she's just normal. Yes. Kind of wild, devastating. There was a little foreshadowing. There's like a moment early in that episode where she's like, sometimes I just want to know how you feel or like as a human. Mm -hmm. And after I heard that, I was like, well, that's an interesting thing for her to, you know, just bring up. Um, and then, of course, like, you know, at the end of the third one, you, you're not sure what happens next and whether she gets them back when she yeah. meets Forge. But what do you think about all of kind of the the tragedy of the show? Because they're very hardcore. It's like you're sending your son into the future. You're never going to see him again. You've lost all of your powers. You're, you you know, Xavier didn't leave uh, the will to you. The will to you. Like, mm-hmm. it's very intense. Magneto's in charge now. And it's ironic because it's very intense human relationship stuff yeah. going on. Uh, what do you think about all that? Well, I think that that's cool to because, again, that's the whole point of the X-Men in general. Like, we have to remember that this is all symbolism for regular people. Like, it just it just makes sense. But also, I really like how uh, um, the cliffhangers tell us like a different side or like a different story towards each character. Again, having this like really, really um, not so connected <laughs> relationship yeah. uh, with the series. Like it's just, it makes it easier for me. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I forgot that there was going to be a, a another, a whole other child, but then this other person is a clone, but then mm, how, when, when, yeah, mm. like when did that happen? Oh, okay. So that makes more sense that she has the memories and this is like, there's a lot of explaining that comes with all of these intense tragedies, but it makes me care for the characters so much more. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's kind of comforting in a way. I don't know. Like to see them uh, uh, go through some of the stuff they go through, mm-hmm. you know, because it is in it's intense, mm-hmm. but it also reminds me like how crazy it is we watched this kind of series as <laughs> as a kid, a kid because <laughs> you know this this is they're not cussing or anything, no, and they're and it's not super it's not inappropriate. There were some kissing, but it is very different than watching a series. Where like you know everything is going to end happily and everyone's at the clubhouse again. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's it's, not it's that's not what this like, is at oh, all. Oh no, he's dead, <laughs> or you know he's he's going to lose his family now, or, or it's intense. And like I don't know. As I, I think looking back, I'm like, how did I receive this info as a kid? Mm-hmm. Was I like, damn, <laughs> I need to watch out for <laughs> for who I start a family with, or <laughs> whatever. It's just kind of crazy. But yeah. it's also right now. I think it's updated too because they know it's people like us watching it. 
Mm -hmm. probably. I don't know. Would you throw this to your kid? I don't know. Like it, it depends. <laughs> yeah. The last one's pretty scary. Right. Well, I mean, that be because it's um, sinister. Mm -hmm. So it's in the name. Sinister. Like if there was red flags like that, no, I wouldn't let my kids watch it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think that everything else should be fine. I feel like, and I haven't seen the really old ones. I feel like even this, this uh, new season or this new show really kind of is a lot better. It's a huge improvement mm -hmm. because of how um, melodramatic, I guess it is, and, and how uh, c complicated the relationships are. I don't remember it being like this, the, the old show. And I might be wrong, but I feel like the old show was not this intense in, in, in terms of like uh, how much strain it puts on all of the X-Men's relationships. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was like, oh, there's something bad. We have to stop it. And then one person kind of has an issue, mm. but then everything's okay. Or there was just like a main villain that they kept busting and then yeah. that's about it. And, but, but then I also remember the, the hatred towards mutants being like a, a big huge thing. deal still. Like people throwing things at people walking down the street. And I'm like, well, that's kind of intense. Well, think so. about the time. Yeah, I'm like, oh, you know? maybe this is <laughs> just always the way it is. Hmm. But I mean, these are deeper because like even with Cyclops when... Um, it was time to say bye to Nathan. He was like, well, I don't want to abandon yeah. him. That's yeah. my baby. That's he, and, I, I don't want to be my... And he has abandonment problems. I was going to say, I don't want to be my dad. Everyone you know? has daddy issues, mm -hmm. even Scott. Right. And so, like, as maybe we're just seeing it through different eyes because we're adults mm -hmm. now and we, we can understand more versus just watching a cartoon on TV. Plus, it kind of makes you, especially that episode, because that episode kind of puts into question a lot of... Uh, uh, of the ideas you had about the reality the X-Men were living in mm -hmm. because it's like, oh shit, Jean Grey, who was pregnant in episode one, mm -hmm. is a clone. Yeah. So you're like, oh, I invested a little bit of... Time? Of, yeah, I'm like <laughs> kind of... In my emotional kinda, space. <laughs> we saw her name the baby. <laughs> you're yeah. just like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and it's resolved, but it's also like kind of like crazy because it makes you think, oh, what else can... What else... What else can well, we believe, baby? And also with the second episode, like just having to have a trust in Magneto, which is like not what we're used mm -hmm. to because we've seen him as such a terrible figure towards the X-Men. And yeah. then the whole episode, you're still on the edge of like, is he is he doing this for himself or is he doing this for actual Charles and his yeah. dream? Like Which protecting the X Men, and you're like, wait, you're like, now. wait a minute, do you, like, do I, don't you trust? I don't trust him. Um, I don't know personally. Uh, I'm still I'm still on the fence, so I can only imagine how the X Men must feel. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I I really am still on the fence. Um, about about Sir Magneto, I don't know what I mean when when we talk about things that we can't really trust or whatever. St you know, after three episodes, mm -hmm. what's going on with Rogue and Magneto? Yeah, am see, right? this is that this seems is like why. it's simmering and Gambit's getting like it's mm -hmm. that's something that's brewing and and there's a history there or something, right? That's what I'm saying. And as someone who has not seen or not, I have I'm sure I've seen the previous yeah. episodes, but as someone who doesn't remember vividly the previous episodes, and I'll say this: don't feel bad because it it doesn't it's not a thing in the previous episodes. Right. Well, I'm not. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to feel about it. Yeah, it's it's weird. <laughs> Just, that's it. Yeah. I, I mean, she t she touched him. They both have white hair, so they can they have that in common. Oh, see, if that's her dad or something, I'm gonna feel real weird because I, I thought it was something a step that further. That's that's not a dad vibe. Yeah, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and I really don't know either. And so I'm excited for whatever that twist is, whatever that history is, mm -hmm. um, and how Gambit reacts. It's also funny, like he probably could just ask her what what like. Yeah, what's, what's going, going on. on but instead he's having these wild visions of mm -hmm. you know i don't know anger or resentment or i don't know so i can't wait to see what that what, what's going on with that um a lot of the voice actors from the original series return which is crazy they still have the same voice mm -hmm. i guess um but yeah overall kind of a nostalgic Kind of show, but also kind of delivers on a lot of the, the dramatic stuff. Which has been your favorite episode so far? You know, the last one was really fun. Okay. I like the nightmare scenarios, and mm -hmm. I feel like there was a lot of creativity in thinking of, like, how do I make a teddy bear uh, grow teeth and then his neck becomes Ugh. a mo You know, like, yeah. I feel like that's really fun. Sinister is really 
uh, Dev is kind of a scary character mm-hmm. just overall. But um, yeah, it's kind of crazy because Magneto and Rogue weren't there, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Like during most of that. Yeah. So that's kind of crazy to think about like what would what would they see? That That's what I would want to know because everyone sees their fears. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's been, yeah, I like that one. Do you have a different favorite? Um, episode? Yeah. Mm, no, I think... I think I'm on the same page as you, mm-hmm. um, just because it, it's it's really cool to see all of the the darker things that are part of the X Men. And yeah. um, I mean, what I was thinking, <laughs> what I kept thinking about was like this reminds me of that uh, closet from Harry Potter when it shows you like your biggest fear oh, and you have to face yeah. it yourself. I can't remember what it's called right now, but wow. um, well, this isn't a Harry Potter. Podcast. No, I know that's why I can't remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's what I was thinking. And I was like, oh, wow, I can only imagine if like my entire reality was that thing. It's plus, like stepping into the, into plus the box. Plus demons. Yes. Um, I don't know if, I don't know what I'd see. Okay. I'm your thinking gr- about your it now. Bigge- your biggest fear? I think it would be water. Like open I'm ocean. Scared. Oh yeah. But how would that even look? You would just be dropped yeah. in the middle of the ocean. Um, And just so you know, I don't want to embarrass you or anything, but what? the closet wasn't haunted in harry potter it's no i know it was the actual being like the a boggart that my one dear that's girl. what it is yeah a boggart a boggart yeah. a boggart harry it's a boggart okay that sounds good i should do i should do x-men mm-hmm. um and then uh and, and what else are you like uh, well i guess that's kind of a loose thread um obviously there's a whole mutant forge F- oh forge new new mutant can't mm-hmm. wait to see who that is and, and what you know He said that he could bring back Storm's powers, and I want to say that he's like a Native American uh, X-Men. In Texas. Uh Uh-huh. Wow. Um, Represent. Yeah. Um, So I'm excited to see. I want to say that there's going to... This is my prediction. I don't know. Uh, But I want to say that there's like um, a... Like an herbal or like a natural remedy for her to like trigger within herself that uh, her powers come back. Yeah, that would be really cool. I don't know. I mean, I hope the powers get back to her. Oh, for sure. I'll just say that. I don't know. I don't know how much she's enjoying being a human. Just based it's not on great. just based on I, I can will tell you say that. she should have changed her hair hey, to be less From experience, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. I'll just say that. I, I agree. I tell Storm, uh, if I could control the weather I versus know. not being able to do that, I would pick being able to do that. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Ooh, which of the characters would you like to share powers with? share powers with well like have the same powers i see like the it's not about the most powerful when you ask that question because gene gray is the most powerful but i don't want to know what everyone's thinking all the time that okay well that, you're right that wasn't the question i asked you okay, i asked good. you i asked you i'm what eliminating was the, them one what? by one <laughs> okay so not gene morph could look like anyone but mm-hmm. i don't want to look like anyone but me oh my gosh so not morph. okay magneto can control metal mm-hmm I can do that already with magnets. Okay. Dumb. Oh my god. Uh, uh, Cyclops. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. you I don't have to wear like... sunnies all the time. I wear. I have prescription glasses. My eyes I, are I already need, fried. I would need prescription <laughs> shades or whatever thing he has. Okay. Who else is there? Rogue. I want to touch people. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Get out of town. Mm-hmm. Wolverine. Um, it's got, to be uh, fair, I don't to... want to be a cut. Or wait. I don't want to be a third wheel think, my whole life. I think he has like the most average powers. Wolverine? Yeah. He can heal himself. He doesn't die. He's invincible. Yes, I know. But like, that's okay. What? But that's good. That, but that's like that and then the steel. He's strong. And that's it. Yeah. Oh my God. But there he's only more. strong because he works out. Like what happens if he stops there working out? There are some Wolverine. Also, you no. Know, does he, does he, no. let me finish. Let me finish. Does he heal himself from like heart attacks? Like yeah, medical, he things? literally heals himself from everything. Oh, that's great. There's some things where he's the last person. Like, will alive. he heal himself if he gets shot in the head? Yep, he gets shot in the head a lot, and he's really. Fine. It just takes time. Oh, my God. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. Uh, okay, Dead, who, Deadpool can already I do that though. There's already, uh, there's I don't already want to be anyone. One. Okay, You're not even Beast. <laughs> I'm looking you, at the I list. Thought, I thought you would be Beast. Yeah, but he's. It's kind of uncomfortable. He can you get appre- lice or, or something. You appreciate. So can you. Oh my gosh, that's blowing my mind. <laughs> Damn. I think I would want to be Morph because you're right. He what? can turn into anybody. And he takes their powers too, I guess. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. you can just you can just hang out. Just think about it really quick and then boom, you're there. 
I would be. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I reg- I regret asking you. I thought you would have had this in the back of your head already. Xavier, Professor X. Oh, he's. But then it's the same reasoning for Jean. It's true. Like she can hear everybody's thoughts too. So can Charles. Yeah, everyone's so sad. Everyone has a weakness. I don't like it. Okay. I guess I would be um, Cyclops. That's cool. I guess. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So that's all of the stuff that's happening so far. We're really enjoying the series. Do you have any final thoughts on X Men ninety seven? I'm just really excited to see what happens next. Like I said, I do appreciate their cliffhangers. Um, having not remembered anything from the previous seasons, yeah. um, or episodes. Uh, Is it interesting to you as like an adult? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I'm learning these characters on a deeper level every yeah. episode. The two D doesn't bother you. No, I think it's really cool. Yeah. Like I and honestly, I sometimes I feel like animation that we have now is a little <sighs> over Don't get me started. It's a little overstimulating, like yeah. trolls. Coco, get out of here, Coco. What are you talking about? Coco Melon. Oh. Is that his name? His name is JJ. What? <laughs> I thought his first name was Coco. His last name was Melon. No. Coco Melon. Oh, like I also like Bluey. Bluey's two dimensional. Yeah. So, so you just I, like two dimensional. I do. Stuff, I think yeah. it's very simple. Hey, you it's, like your shows like you like your men. Okay. Two dimensional. Yes. It's easy for Not me. Not complicated. It's easy for me to follow like yeah. the stories, the dialogue, what's happening. I like it. Oh my gosh. I think and I also think it's great. the animation's amazing. The action is amazing. I love oh. X Men is all X Men is good. Because okay. oh, that's not a good start to sentence. Wow, that was very I was gonna extreme. say it, X-Men working together is Ooh, yelling. Good. <laughs> I like it. I like to see that. Okay. You know when it's like, hey, throw me, throw me, uh, throw me, Wolverine. What? Like when they work together when they fight oh, all like together. When they fight together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Because a lot of times it's just like Batman punching something for ten hours. Sure. But Batman's this one, not part of the X Men. No, no, no. But I'm saying that other superhero oh, stuff. Okay. It's like one on. They're like this time. Oh, okay. Is personal. So you just so you me just, and you. You just want the Avengers all the time. Yeah. We get that. <laughs> we get we get that in this and this. Oh my gosh, the Magneto's in on it now. Just giving oh. you your fix. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay. I oh I I got this crazy oh, idea. Oh my gosh, what is it? Professor X comes back at like the finale or some shit. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen, right? I, I don't think that's gonna happen. You don't um, think so? You think they want it to be like, so. he's gone? Honestly, they could have used the time bracelet to just go back in time instead of they, going back into true. the future. <laughs> they have other dimensions. So to, yeah. we could have been done that. <laughs> Here's Episode what I'll one, say. done. The, the X-Men live action series, I don't know if you remember this, there's a scene mm. where Professor X dies and the cliffhanger in the mid credits is his tomb moving a little bit. <gasps> So he comes back all the time, okay. but maybe not. <laughs> also, didn't the little stone that, um, oh, what is his name? I don't know what this is. Mr. Now. Sinister uh-huh. had on in his head? forehead. Uh-huh. Yeah. Didn't, did that not give like vision vibes? Oh, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, damn, he has a stone. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. How many are left? But yeah, I think we could have totally followed Bishop over to his uh, time frame to see what's up with future and uh, technology well, to solve a lot of our problems. I don't think Nathan's got to come back and let now us know. Now that I'm kind of in the flow of the show, mm-hmm. I don't think that's against that. That's I think that's totally possible. Like well, yeah. I, I, they are all interconnected. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff can happen from episodes. Good. I wouldn't be surprised if Scott. If, if we see Nathan again, if Nathan oh, is a grown f- person, for sure gonna, like it's all good. The can, last words that wild. Jean said towards Nathan were "remember." You're gonna tell me that he's not gonna remember? Mm-hmm. She that was, would be she so was, cool. She was speaking straight into his mind. It would be so cool to implant like something into a baby's mind, mm-hmm. and that then drop so him cool. off in the future. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be like, look, I'm not gonna be around, <laughs> but just know <laughs> your uncle's gonna take care of you in the future, man. Bishop isn't even related to them. I know, but they're all family. It's the X Men, and that's what—that's how we're going to end this episode. Toretto. Remember how important family is. Family. If you were had a good family like the X Men do, and if you didn't, you'd be okay. And if you don't, find an X Men. Find an X Men <laughs> family. You know, mm-hmm. find them. Sure. All right. Well, uh, we've come to. The, oh, <laughs> final thoughts. Anything else you want to add about X Men ninety seven so far? No, I just like it. Yeah, it's good. Okay. It's good. Go watch it. <laughs> X-Men is good because they fight good. Okay. Um, X-Men we'll, good, fight good. We'll be back. I don't know when, but we'll be back to talk more episodes. We'll be back of, next up. Yes, we will be back in the next app. What? 
Like what the next saying? the next episode of X Men. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, "What do you mean?" I, yeah, oh when we gosh. release another episode, that'll be when we're back. I thought that's what you were saying. I was like, "Yeah, that's how this works." Okay. Um, but we'll be excited to talk about uh, about it. We've come to the end of this one, Sophia. What do you have to plug? Oh, just the same old, same old stuff. Thank you for supporting us. We appreciate your patience. Yeah. Oh, sorry for the break. Did we say that up front? No, we did not. What we thank we thank you for all your concern and all the messages. Yes. And, um, we're telling okay. us that we should watch X-Men 97. We were going through a slight divorce, but we've worked it out and no, it's okay. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> a slight di- What is a slight divorce? Well, we're not married yet, so it was like a Why separation, but like not a not a full-on one because here we are. Why would you say that? That's I'm just not a, that's not real. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. But we're doing we're fine. We're basically the Everyone's royal okay. family for podcasters. <laughs> for for Marvel podcasts and you saying that, you know, people are going to be really upset about it, you know? They're going to be tweeting. Uh, if you post a video online, they're going to think it's not real. No, no. AI. <laughs> Everybody knows. But no, yeah, just yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for your support and your patience and understanding. Um, that goes a long way. So thank you. you? Um, and thank you for continuing to listen to us despite our breaks. Um, we uh, we just really appreciate it. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to follow me on any socials, you sure can. Everything's going to be at underscore simply Sophie, S-O-F-I-E-E. Thanks so much for listening. Listen to all the Dolphin Pod shows, Dirt Sheet Radio, Revenge of the Sequel, The Countdown Strikes Back, Woo. Screen Slush. Go Love. to Patreon to support us. We'll be back soon. Bye. Bye.